Hey guys, it's Gabrielle and welcome to my channel and for another video. So I'm doing things a little bit differently this time. I have created a series of video called Hair Chemistry, Hair Biochemistry by Gabrielle and this is my quest to understanding what our hair really is and consequently how it will interact or how different products and ingredients interact with it. It's no news that all of us out here want to grow long, healthy, vibrant hair and we go about it different ways. Some of us listen to gurus, some of us try different ingredients, some of us try different products and there's nothing wrong with all of these methods. It's just that I sought to really, really understand what hair is and how is it formed and then how do products interact with it. Now as we all know, hair formation begins long before it pops out of your scalp. And we've had words like keratin or fibrous protein or cuticle or the medulla thrown out there once or twice. But I sought to really, really, really understand what hair is. And I'll give you an example. I believe that dimethicone does not work for my hair. But in order to be sure that it's true dimethicone doesn't work on my hair, two things are necessary. One, I need to understand what dimethicone is and have an idea of the chemical composition of it. Two, I need to understand what my hair is and have an idea of the chemical composition on it and then put the two together and see where the potential conflict could be. And this is exactly what I did and I know for sure that my hair just does not like dimethicone. And you could take this example and use it on any single thing. You could take this and use it with aloe vera, you could take it and use it with shea butter, basically any product in the universe. You could take it and compare it or put it together with your hair and figure out if really that product conflicts with your hair. Of course there's other things that matter when it comes to uh, choices for your hair products, but for the most part you can just tell by having a little bit of a basic understanding of what hair is. And so I sought to understand the second part is, if hair is indeed dead, as a lot of people will tell you, why should I moisturize it every day? Why should I deep condition it? Why should I keep it from tangling? I wanted to understand how come that my hair tangles so much in comparison to a Caucasian counterpart or in comparison to an Indian counterpart. I really wanted to understand our hair so that before I can even talk about growing it or maintaining that length, I can first of all understand what it is and the bigger picture of how to take care of it. And so I began learning what hair is. And as I mentioned, hair begins formation begins way before it pops out of your scalp. So I went deeper, farther than the cuticle, farther than the medulla, farther than the keratin, really at the genesis of when hair is formed to understand what chemicals come together to form it, how do they come together, and then what do other chemicals that are in different products interact with the chemicals that makes my hair. And I have begun to understand really not only how to care for my hair, but how to choose products and how to make informed decisions when it comes to things like styling and coloring. And so I wanted to share this information with you guys because my goal is really to help anybody out there who's looking to grow their hair to understand what hair is and hopefully begin a journey with informed decisions. Now granted, it does get a little bit technical at times and the terms do get a little heavy, but if all of us can just walk away from this with just a basic understanding of what hair is and the ability to really make decisions based on our understanding of our own hair, among other things of course, like diet and exercise and stress and hormones and all of that, but fundamentally really understanding what hair is and how different things interact with it, then I think the goal will have been accomplished. So this series is called Hair Biochemistry by Gabrielle and so I broke it into small chunks uh, of information so that we begin slow and as it gets and slowly slowly it's gonna go and get complex but hopefully all of us will have understood what hair is and how it's formed and why it's needed and the different chemical compositions in it and hopefully be able to just take care of our hair better armed with this information. I thank you guys for watching. I thank you for supporting my channel. So here's the first segment of Hair Biochemistry by Gabrielle. Thank you for watching and I hope you come back for more. I will see you soon. Hey guys, so welcome to the first episode of Hair Biochemistry. So if you talk to anybody about hair or if you've read a little bit about hair, most of us know that hair is a protein. 
and the name of that protein is keratin. Now keratin is the protein that's most abundant in hair, hooves, nails and even feathers. Another type of protein is something like collagen. Now proteins are important organic compounds in the body and they are all basically formed the same way except some of them have other materials that help them for the purpose for which they are made. In the case of all proteins they are made of amino groups and all amino groups have the following as elements in the groups. The first one is carbon which makes them organic, then nitrogen, then oxygen and hydrogen. In the case of keratin, there is a fifth element called cysteine and we will discuss that at a later video. So what does this all mean? How is your hair actually formed? Carbon combines with oxygen and hydrogen. That's the first part. The second part is nitrogen combines with two hydrogen molecules and this is negatively charged. This, I'm sorry, this is positively charged and this is negatively charged. Now the names for this is carboxylic acid and this is amine. And the difference is really one is positively charged and the other one is negatively charged. And this is an acidic amino group while this is alkaline amino group. But how does it really look like if you were to make a, a representation of how this bond occurs? It would look like this. If I was to draw circles around this, you would see these two elements in here. The first one is the nitrogen with the two hydrogen molecules. And there you have it. The second one is carbon with the two oxygen and a hydrogen molecule. So there it is. Therefore, they are sharing these two molecules. So this is in fact what is called a covalent bond. Now, we know several things like when an alkaline and an acid mix, they make a salt. So this here is a salt bond. And there you have it, the basics of how your hair is formed. Stay tuned for the next episode. Bye.